Well, Happy New Year everyone. We're going to prune the raspberries today. With autumn root fruit in raspberries, you have to cut them right off near the base. There are two types of raspberries, like I said, autumn and summer. Summer fruit in raspberries, which are the ones over here. Fruit on uh, old previous year's growth. In this case, you cut out last year's fruiting growth and keep the new growth that has not produced any fruit. It's a frosty day today and we've just had a power cut. I'm going to have a go at pruning this grape now. It's uh, early January. I'm going to cut it back to about here in between these two bars. Yeah, it's freezing cold out, icy. That's uh, 15 out. 17.5 inside, 57% humidity. Actually there's a shoot there I missed by the look on it. I could uh I need to cut him back. I'll just show you what I was on about with the um two buds. If you look right down in there, see that bud? So that's right by the cane. And then you come back and there's another bud there. So I was counting that as two buds. And I was actually chopping it through on the third bud. Which is what I'm going to do now. So yes, yeah, on the third bud, of first bud up there near the stem. One more, and then the third one where I'm going to cut it. Kate's collecting some manure to put around the raspberries. There you go. She's uh, done the autumn fruit in ones. Probably put too much in, making it heavy work. Well, I'll come down to check on the sweet peas. Looks like the mice spin out of because there was, I don't know if you can see this, it's like little holes in them. And the ones that are left in the packet that you know, I used for the label, you see, they're all sprouting. And then we're going to sow some uh, raw beans. And the mice have been eating them as well, as you can see. We do have a broad bean. Well seeded. If they're doing it on their own, it tells you it's time for you to help them out. Yeah, we've redone the sweet peas. We're just uh, putting some shallots in. As you can see, they're all sprouting. These were given to me by uh, somebody over the other side of the allotment. Come from France originally, apparently. Just into some fibre pots. Just uh, sown some leeks. Now we're just going to put a piece of glass over the top. Now we're just loading up the bait station. That's for uh, rats or, well, I'll probably get the mice as well, it? The other anti uh, mice thing is to reinstall my floating bench length of January. I'm not sure if that's focusing but anyway it's 16.3 outside, 17 inside, 45 humidity. Another bucket of sarpo. Just emptied a bucket of charlottes as well. This is one of the carrot bins. Just been emptying the buckets of compost into from the potato buckets. The leaks are still there. Very little rust, which is quite good. The blueberries we're going to pot up into a couple of the potato buckets just to pot them on a little bit. Plate's got the brush out. We're having a bit of a tidy up. Just thought I'd do a little video about how we do some chilli seeds. These are Joe's Long chilies, um, saved from my own seed. And what I do, I chip them. I'm putting them into Jiffy 7s. I've already hydrated these and did a little video. I'll show you that in a minute. Before I try and pick the seed up, what I'm going to do is just uh, make a little hole and uh, just break this open a bit to make way for the seed. Anyway, I'm back. <laughs> I've managed to get him out and he's sticking on the end of the matchstick. I don't know if you can see that.
Anyway, I'm just going to drop them into the 237. So dip me match back in the water. There we go. Got another one. So that'll be four there, won't it? Just break that one in a bit. Just drop him in. There we go. I might just uh, cover those back over. Break these matches in half to indicate which ones uh, got the seed in. Oh, I'm just going to fold it up now so all this seed are trapped then in between. I think I might let it dry out a little bit as well overnight. I'll leave the bag open tonight so it can just dry out a little bit. I've done this uh, a few years ago. I'll see if I can find a, a picture and give you sort of a, a pre-look of what happens. Alright, this is a sweet potato. And I've got it's got them in a jam jar of water. And the idea of this is to uh, propagate some uh, sweet potato. What you want to do if you're going to have a go at this is to get organic sweet potatoes. And the reason for that is the other, the non-organic ones are treated and it stops them going into growth. You can see them. You see that little root? Change the water every now and again because it will get dirty and it will send roots. It will almost fill this jar with roots. Don't look like it at the moment, does it? But it will. And then you'll get little shoots coming out of here. God, I'm gonna hang on, I'm gonna go and have a look on the internet and just get find the name. Anyway, I'm back. They're called slips. Don't ask me why they're called slips, I got no idea, and I couldn't even remember the name. Anyway, so that's sweet potato. We'll see how we get on. I'll do some updates as I go along. Thursday the 19th of January 2017 Temperature in the tunnel 16.4 I think that might be outside 12.8 inside 67% humidity There's plate tying in the raspberries Got some bulbs coming up These are the bulbs that were part of my competition and the Isles of Silly. We put some other jumping jacks in this bucket. They're not showing yet. If you're taking the top off of one of these bins, just cut around the outside. Some people just cut around the top there. There's a reason I'm doing it this way, and I'll show you that in a minute. Well, that's the top off. Just got to clean up some of these bits, burry bits here. Look. You can see that. I'll just scrape it around a bit with something in a minute, a knife or something. And that's the top. Out of breath now. Anyway, so why do I cut it that way? Well, if you put it on there like that, upside down, you've got a nice lid. Plate's finished the raspberries by the look on it. And now she's clearing up the rhubarb area. Just dig out one of the crowns in the old one, split it up in the bag now this time of year, replant the separate bits and they grow new plants. Place to do it every year, uh, well, probably about every five years I reckon. Right we just put our bin, our forcing bin over one of the crowns of rhubarb. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you're going to edit this. 295 for two kilograms of uh, sea potatoes. Good choice. Yeah, 
interesting to see if they got sarcomeria there as well. We got seeds in brown paper bags. What's that one there? That's a, a broad bean bunyards exhibition. Three pound ninety five, one kilogram. We got labels to tell you what they are. So you got the Sutton, which is dwarf variety, which I knew about. <laughs> Two pound fifteen, five hundred gram. Green shaft peas, I yield in main crop. 75 centimetres tall, I suppose that means. Comes in one kilogram. Oh no, is that, yeah, comes in, comes in one kilogram. £3.50. I think we'll go for the small bag. 195, 500 grams. Spade handles. Oh, fork handles. Reminds you of a comedy sketch. It's 11.4 in the tunnel. 6.1 out. I can see the in and out now. Don't know if you can. So it's in at the top. Oops. And out at the bottom. I think the I think the grape is actually starting to bud a bit. I'll leave it a bit longer yet before I tie it back up to the wire. But it does look like buds are coming. I just switched the macro on and see if we get a better focus. It might do. Oh that's better isn't it? See the buds? Wonder why I won't get in a very good focus. I think we might be having a brew up. A bit later, a cup of coffee. Uh, coffee's coffee's made. Got some cups down from home. Got some bottled water, because the water's off on the allotment at the moment. I've got a post at each end. Just go along to the other end up there. And uh, just above the tunnel. I got a bit of old strimmer wire and it just stretches between those two posts. The idea is if the birds come down they touch it and it just scares them off. But like I said what I normally do as well you can see there's good cane it's been cable tied onto that upright piece so it takes it higher up the polytunnel and then I just uh, attach a windsock at both ends so then when the wind's blowing one way it's blowing over, one of them's blowing over the tunnel and if it blows the other way the other one's blowing over the tunnel yeah. like I said what happens I think the insects come and they always get to the top I expect, I expect you've noticed them and I think the birds see them from the outside and they try to peck through the plastic to get at the insects probably to eat them I've been given some onion seedlings. I'll transfer them out now next time we come down. We'll be going shortly. I'm gonna just move the bin. Look at all the rat holes. They say you're never more than about 10 feet from a rat. Plate started to prune the apple tree. Oh, that's a nice view through there, looking at the clouds, isn't it? Got an update on the chilies. You can see they're starting to come through now. So at the back there as well. And uh, if you can get into this, I'll have to tip it up. There's one there, that coming through. And I'm going to also put them into the Jiffy 7s once they've germinated. So let's rehydrate the Jiffy, Jiffy 7s. I've got some water. It's, it's lukewarm. Works better if you have it slightly warm. Just pour that into the container. Oh, yeah. I'll just bring over the pods. See, they've come up. Need a bit more water in those. So just give them a bit more water. They soon soak it up. It's amazing really how it does it. I find if you just put a bit on top as well, it, it helps it. Hello, good morning. Welcome to my kitchen. No, it's not about cooking. It's not even about growing really. But hang on. It's about saying thank you to all my subscribers. I'd like to say a big thank you to all those that are not on the list because I've only just thought about trying this. So all those that have scrubbed this, subscribed to me before this year, thank you very much as well. It's much appreciated. Sometimes YouTube is uh, a bit baffling. It's like uh, if somebody thumbs you up or thumbs you down, 
you can't tell who that person is. Like I said, this video is about saying thank you. Thank you for subscribing, thank you for watching, and come back and happy gardening. Bye bye for now. Right, this is the second batch of chilies, and uh, some of them have germinated. So you can see one there in the middle. Just cut some matches up just to mark which ones I got them in, but I think they're going to be in all of them. Just uh, fluff it up a bit, just to make it a little bit looser. Oh, I didn't mind that last one, did I? I didn't mind that one before I forget. And the next one. I'll just get my spray bottle. Just give them a quick spray on the top. Anyway, fold this back over now. Have a look in uh, tomorrow. Perhaps do the other two. And I'll start some more Jiffy 7s off as well. Put them back in the bag. Hot KN. 28th of January they were put in there. Zip it up, leave a little bit open. Plate's been to the emergency centre of our local nursery, gardening centre. And she's got this very sickly bay tree. She's going to try and uh, recover it. Sweet peas, fired. Just over there. And I still haven't done the onions, which I'm going to do in a minute. 21.1 in the polytunnel, 17.9 out, but that's with the sun shining on the probe. Oh, there's the onions done. Two trays. Don't know what variety they are, as I was giving them. So they're going to be called uh, Bob's Onions. Fates reported the sick plant bay leaf she's put some john in this number three in there with some fish bud and bone in a slightly larger pot there's the coffee plates over here on the phone trying not to sneeze because i got the camera on <laughs> leaks are starting to show I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I'll get as close as I can. There you go. We got some more buckets from Weight Rose. The flower buckets, and they have the flowers in. And I've uh, put some more holes in there. I've just gone across the corner so it protrudes into the bottom and up the side of it. And I think that's a bit better. Collected a few. I think they're 99 pence for eight. So pretty cheap buckets, although they're not very uh, sturdy. They do break quite easily. Just give you a look at the sweet peas a bit closer up to what I did yesterday. Yeah, it's quite a good germination rate. Still a few more to come up. We're doing a bit of cleaning of the polytunnel. Surprised at actually how dirty it is on the inside. If you look where our uh, plate's cleaning now and then look above you can see all the dirt like, in the ridges from uh, Isham. Ritkim Major. Never never grown them before. I'm just going to do them in some plastic cups. Cheap plastic cups. Just put some holes in the bottom and then stand them in these modules so that they take two on the broad beans. We've got to put the memory card in the last lot. Yeah, so we're going to make another lot up here. So I've just got some plastic pots, melted some holes in. So I'm just going to fill the cups up. I'll cut through to the end of this in a minute. This is uh, a mixture of a bit of perlite, a bit of uh, general multi-purpose compost and some John Innes number three. There's the seed. That's what broad bean seeds look like. The pink stuff, I think, is the thorough. Where you got like the little scarry bit. 
I'm going to put that down. So I'm going to poke my finger down in all the pots. That's it. And then I'm going to just pop them in. Narrow side down. Just going to put a bit of soil back over the top. I'll just tap them down a bit, I think. I'll just use a cup. One of the cups. Right, that's all I'm done. Just got to go and get a label. There's all radish under here. We've cleared the tops off. We've never uh, dug this old radish up before or used it, so we really don't know what we're doing. It was here when I uh, took the plot over and I didn't know about it. Anyway, we're not sure whether we should do it with a fork or a spade, but there's some roots down in there. She's uh, uncovering. She's going. Ooh! ooh. <laughs> Yeah, we've got the spade out now. The fork was a bit uh, hard work. Yeah, I'll get out of go now. I have got a really heavy spade. Might be better for this job. Oh, I heard it crack. Hey! Well, let's have a look what it's like. Be a, be a tiny little root now. Oh no, not bad. It's a biggish bit. Looks like we sliced it. I don't think it matters too much. It's all radish. That's what the tops look like when they're starting to grow in the new season. Right, just brushing it off. Get the worst off before we take it out. They will get cleaned again at home and peeled. You've got to be careful when you're doing this. You really need to do it in a, a nice uh, open area, not in a closed room. I got the door open behind me, and when I do the uh, bits in, I'll have the fan on as well. Peel it off. Get to get it all white. If you get any sort of dark bits that you can't get with the potato peeler, just cut them out. See, that's going quite deep. That one could be a bit of dirt and grit in there. Right, I've just been uh, chopping it up into little chunks. This is going to go in a mini chopper. There you go, that's that all chopped up. I've just got one of these little mini choppers. Oh, we've had him in for a long time. He's a bit broke, really, but I think he'll work. Better test it. There he goes. So, this, I'm just going to put a bit of sugar in it, some water. Vinegar. Anyway, it's just basically to make it up into a paste. So you need a bit of liquid to get it into a paste. I'm going to go and open the door. I'm going to turn the fan on. So I'm not sure how the sound is going to be. Right, oh, that's not too noisy for you. It won't be as noisy as the the blender anyway. So, but just be warned if you look if you open this up and look at it and breathe it in, it will hurt you. So be careful if you're uh, making horseradish sauce. Right, I think we'll add a bit of water first. See how it goes. Just get a little spatula. Substitute spatula for a spoon. <laughs> Alright, I'm not going to get near this. I'm just going to scoop that down off the top of there. See, it's all like shredded now. We need to get it into a paste. Although I think some people do have it. I'll add a bit of vinegar this time. This is uh, just white vinegar. Distilled white vinegar. I got to run the wrong way, I think. There we go. Uh, it's coming. Don't know if I can show you that. It's starting to come. I think we'll give it a bit of sugar now. I think we'll give it a 
tablespoon, roughly. Grab a bit more water. Oh, oh, caught me eye then. Oh. Oh, it's getting strong now. Oh, gosh. Oh. Now clear your sight, this is out. Oh. I think that's nearly there now. Those are the jars we're using. They've been washed. So just going to disinfect them now really in the microwave. Dry. You see there's water in there at the moment. So microwave them until they're dry. I'm just going to spoon it in there. I'll just wipe around the uh, top of the pot and grab a lid. Where did I put the lids? There we go. One jar, one jar of horseradish. Oh gosh. Well, that's it from a oh, a tearful plot and a tearful plate. And if you think we're kidding, we're not. This stuff is lethal. You think chilies are bad? God. Anyway, give it a go, it tastes nice. These are parsnip seeds. And I've, I've been uh, doing it the same way as I do the chilli seeds. Just putting it between a bit of kitchen towel inside the plastic bag. There's a couple germinating, there's one there. There's one there. This is a, a bit of an experiment. Over here, I got another one. Anyway, I got interrupted there. So I forgot where I was. So basically, um, I'll just recap on that. So I got two lots of parsnip seeds that were saved from my uh, pot neighbours. And uh, we're having a competition between four of us at the moment who can grow the longest parsnip. So I've been chitting the seeds to firstly make sure they're viable, which seems big as there are a few. Not very many, but uh, the first one I put in the packet on the 11th of February and the second one on the 13th of February. But on the 11th of the February, I put them in the freezer. I put this packet in the freezer because uh, I want to see if uh, freezing parsnip seeds can bring them out of dormancy. Anyway, interrupted again. I'm having a good day today, am I? What was I saying? Okay, let's. Mixed F1. Never grown them before. But they have eaten them. We bought some at uh, one of the little mini supermarkets. Actually, both of them. And uh, they're lovely. Yeah, I think we had some last night. Did we have last? Yeah, we had some last night. And the night before. Uh... So we thought we'd have a go at growing stuff. Oh, it's a slightly better day today. We're just off down to the allotment. Oh, this is our allotment, our allotment site. I'm going to quick look around, see what's uh, anything's been blown down. Oh, it doesn't look too bad so far. I don't think we had it as bad as uh, like they did up north. Oh. I think it's the first time I've ever showed you where our allotment is, or what our allotment looks like. The allotment site, anyway, it's not very big. Nice and friendly.
as some of you know I've had a, a few problems with my legs so here comes plate this is from the back of my car it just come down the allotment I'm just gonna have a look if uh, Doris has done any damage first look some blue sky out there I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up there's a lid there blown off the incinerator but that's no big shakes is it shed's looking okay as far as I can see at the moment rear cam man must have hung on well Tommy tunnel looks okay. There's a bin down there, but I'm not surprised at that because there wasn't much in it. Plates finished uh, putting on the blueberries. Bean K still standing. I don't think we had it as bad here as uh, we had it up north. Right, so I'm going to plant some Monge 2 or sow some Monge 2 seeds for uh, to plant out in the polytunnel so that we get an early crop of some nice fresh veg and then just cover your seeds so that's that done and they're quite easy to manage I'm just gonna pop it on the tray oh, fits nicely and then I'll water it in and put a label in it and then the other thing I'm going to do is some French climbing beans because again we put a few in the polytunnel and have an early pick in. I'm just going to use the uh, these little pots for those. All right, we're using cobra as our French climbing bean. Uh, we we've used it lots of times before. It's always been very reliable, good cropper. I don't need many for for growing in the polytunnel. We'll and we'll have to put a label in. The other thing I'm doing is I'm um, just sowing a few sunflower and a few um, marigolds. Again, they're they're usually good sellers at the plant sale. I'm just using cheap plastic cups to put these in. I've stood the individual pots in them um, in a sal tray, it stops them wobbling over. Do some sunflower, this is sunburst. They're a little bit fiddly but not as bad as uh, Brassica seeds. I'm just covering them up a bit. I'm going to sow some uh, Japanese bunching onions. A bit like uh, spring onions. You see that? I was just uh, going to do them in one of these modules. It's so like 15. got some bog standard compost in there. I grew these last year. Thought they were pretty good. That's what they look like. And now what we're gonna do we're just gonna scatter a few in each of the modules. Just gonna put a little bit of soil over the top. Get the label. They're called uh, Ishikura. And this is the 28th of the 2nd, 2017. 
Ishikara. Right, I'm going to do some more uh, K lights in the Jiffy 7s. Do the Jiffy 7s and there we go. The other K lights have got a bit leggy, so I'm going to see if it makes a difference being uh, down the polytor. I've got some slightly bigger uh, Jiffy 7s as well. What I'm going to do is just pop them in these modules. Oh, I'm also doing some uh, cauliflower as well. I think I might just put a little hole in these this time. So am I going to put one seed in each one? Germination rate was quite good. So that was six. The other one we're doing is uh, cauliflower igloo. Doing six of those. I think I'll just do one seed of those as well. I might just sprinkle a bit of uh, compost in the top of these actually. There we go. I'll just tap it down gently. I hydrated the uh, 57s with uh, tap water. Pete's going to tell you about the other bits we got in there that she's been busy with. We've got sweet peas I sowed last week but there's no sign of any germination yet. Two um, different kind of sweet peas. Yeah. yeah. And then today I've done some cobra climbing French beans to put in the polytunnel for an early crop of beans and some sunflowers, uh, sunburst I think they're called. So I've plant sown a lot and hopefully the spares will be going to the um, allotment and um, plant sale later in May. Also did some sugar snap peas which we'll put into the polytunnel when, they, when they're about six inches high. Um, we use the gutter in because it's um, quite convenient and it's uh, just uh, bed size to, to transplant out. I've sown more sunflower and a lot of marigolds, more than we'll ever need. Sweet peas. We're getting ready to think about topping them so that they sprout out, form some nice plants. Bob's onions are still going well. My second sowing of leeks. This is the rhubarb. We've had our first picking. I'll show you that in a minute. Just have a look in the bin. I've taken the lid off at the moment. That's the forcing one. Raw beans, they're all coming up. Going really well. Tied the grape up. We've been manuring all the beds. Outside temperature is 10.1, uh, uh, 6th of March, 5 o'clock. Inside the polytunnel is uh, 17.2. It's uh, Tuesday, 14th of March, 2017. Right, I'm gonna sow some, some of Dan's favorites. Zebrun Shalot. Just got one of these uh, multi-cells. I'm just gonna put some little dimples in. Not gonna try and sow too many in each module. See there, just like just little black things. Plates better at this than me. I like these because they they store quite well. There you go. I'm just gonna run this soil over the top. Get the label, just give them a water. The green shallots, the leggy kailats actually looking quite good now. And these are uh, 
the bunching onions. I do them in the module, take them out like a plug and uh, plant them, you know, all in one go in the plug. And then when you want them, just take the whole plug up. Plates put the broad beans out in the tunnel. The rest will be going outside. This is just to get some early ones. In the middle, she's put some radish. I've got these flower buckets. You get cheap from that. One of the grocery stores. I'm just going to put one potato in each bucket. I'm only doing four today. There's the potatoes. They're uh, international kidney. They're grown in Jersey. You can call them Jersey Royals. There we are, a quarter of a cup. Just going to sprinkle it around in the bucket. There we go. And I'm just going to make a little hole. I'm going to put the potato in with the chips at the top, like that. And I'm going to cover it up with some more compost near enough up to the top. There we go. And I'll give it a bit of water. So it's getting on a bit now. I don't know what time it is. About, I don't know. Four, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Thirteenth uh, of March. Right. There's another chilli update. Going to repot these now. There's the roots. Look at that. You see that? Oh, it's absolutely full of roots there. And what I'm going to uh, pop them up into is some plastic cups. Right, so if you've been following me along, I hope your plants are something like this now because they're, they're looking pretty good. That's the four done. That's the first seeds I started. Now they're going to come out and grow into new bits of stem. And that's what you want. You want lots of growth from low down. So, so we're going to encourage those little side shoots to grow by taking the top out. But I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to wait until it starts to split by itself at the top. And then we'll take out at least the top and maybe even a bit bit more so then you get all these side shoots coming out and then if you top them back you'll get more side shoots and so on and be a nice bushy bushy plant which is nice and stable just thought i'd uh, show you these broad beans the self-seeded broad beans that were in the ton of polytunnel there was a seed on that one and this was about the surface of the soil so he came up all that way it's got to be six inches i reckon and then he emerged on the top. This one is only about what two inches, two or three inches. Here's a, a close up of uh, how it emerges from the seed. So there's the seed, and it's uh, come out of the seed, and then it's branched off, gone down to the roots. And up to the, the stem and the top growth. The size of the roots on the on the short one of the two was enormous. Look at look at that lot. Just look at it. Just full of roots. It's marvellous, really. Here's a close up of uh, the emerging one and the roots coming down there. I just thought these pictures were uh, interesting. There's the two side by side again, showing the difference in the height. Very little uh, growth on top of there, because it had only just emerged from the soil. Whereas this one's got a lot of growth, but a shorter distance to travel. So it just shows you, you know, they say you can plant something five centimeters deep or five millimeters deep or whatever. That would, I bet gnarly any of them say put them six inches deep. Right, I'm going to prick out some lettuce today, but uh, I'm not doing it normally. We've got far too much lettuce. I'll show you that a bit later. And uh, I'm going to put in some gutters. Anyway, it's the uh, 3rd of April, 2017. Plate sowed a few too many lettuce. We'll uh, transplant some into this gutter in. 
and she wants a variety so I'm going to take a few from each one so they're in like uh, little plugs at the moment right so I've got all my plugs out and I'm going to just uh, take the plants got these sticks for the gutter and don't fall over and we'll just uh, stick them in pick a different one Plates just inform me, put them closer. You have to keep these water down. Just to water them in, set them down a bit. Well, that's it. I'll we'll pray those, which is cut and come again. Right, it's the 13th of April now, and here's the lettuce in the gutters. Waiting for the scissors. Right, uh, today I'm going to sow some uh, sweet corn, um, sweet, some more sweet peas, and uh, some ordinary peas in some gutters. It's uh, 7th of April 2017. Some people like to uh, pre soak the seeds, but I tend not to do that. Not taking it right to the top yet. Do that when the peas are in there. It's all a bit dry as I'm doing this. Not going to be too fussy, just sprinkling around. Compost and do four of these. I've got this in my gut, right? I think I have. Especially at this end, if you're trying to land. There you go, I'll do for a moment. Now we're going to have a cup of coffee. Oh, this is the peas in the gutters that I just done. Just got them rested on top of my uh, potato buckets at the moment. Got some sweet peas, uh, sweet corn actually, and sweet peas. So I've got, I've got uh, five, nine sweet corn. There's the seed. We've <laughs> also got some sweet peas in there that have chitted as well. So I'm just going to put some soil into the cups, just loosely. We usually use reek trainers, but I don't think we've got any at the moment. Might put the um, sweet peas into the root trainers, because the... Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Plate put nine in. Nine have germinated. How lucky is that? That's what we need, nine. <laughs> a little hole. Let's top it up with a bit of soil as well. Here's one. See that? So I'm just going to drop that into the pot gently. Now you see why I made a hole? They were in a tub with a bit of damp tissue and a bit of uh, cling film over the top at home. Right, I'm just going to top these back up to cover them up. Doing it this way and shitting them, you know you've got a good germination already. I'll give them a good water in this time. Swift sweet corn. Right, I'm going to do the sweet peas now. 
Anyway, what we're going to do today is to uh, do a, a polytunnel update. Firstly, the grape has, has grown massive. Look at that. I don't know if you'll pick it up with the backlight. But there's like little bunches of grapes coming on there. Actually, they're um, flower buds at the moment. And it goes into flower, self-pollinates and then into the grapes. I've been taking a few off the scraggly ones. Here's our gutter peas. And over here, I've got the potatoes. These are the international kidney, sown on the 13th of March. Further down there, there's four more buckets. There's Charlotte just starting to come through, four buckets of them. Today we've been uh, clearing out this middle bed and I've put in my watering system. So down here we've got a load of beetroot planted out. Moving on up, this is really leggy tomato plants. If you look over there, that's the same tomato plants that came out of those pots. But they're all nice and uh, sturdy, not leggy. They've been down here in the light. The others were in the windowsill at home. This uh, in front is my zebroom shallots. This is the sweet corn. Uh, in the middle there is my Bob's onions. Turns out they're a mammoth is the type now. So I've been told. These are plates flowers. What was it? Calendula. See it on the tray there. And behind them, there's some the second lot of sweet peas we started. And behind them, if I pull the tray over, is the bunch of onions, which we're hoping to put out in, in the bed below this frame. These are the broad beans that we planted out ages ago. This is the radish we took out of the, the bed. These are my chilies. That's plates belly boot. Yeah, cobra climbing French beans. They're just starting to take off, look. This is just the last few days. It's coming halfway up the stick. We've got the Monash two peas. I think I did a video of me sowing, planting these out and sowing them. Moving on. These are the sunflowers in the pots. The lettuce in gutters. It's been really good. In a minute, I'll just video plate uh, taking some. We just take a small amount, enough for a sandwich. Or We've already had quite a bit. Got some plastic bags down here. We just pop them into the plastic bags and pop them into the fridge. Uh, plates just uh, pick some more purple sprout in. We've been picking it about every other day. Spring time's here, time to get going. The plot's all dug, now it's time to start sowing seeds of many kinds and seeds of many colours. I'll see you later, my sisters and brothers. Oh, it was such a lovely day. <laughs> Thunder and lightning. See the rain? Hear it? I think they were having a bank holiday barbecue over there. I had to run for cover. I didn't have time to put my uh, pipe back on my water butt. Oh, a bit of lightning. We decided to come into the polytunnel. I think it makes a nice uh, Faraday cage. We just put a lot of plants out today. I don't think we'll be watering them in. Today is Monday, the 7th of May, and it's really hot here in the polytunnel, even though it's gone 5 o'clock. It's uh, 37.1. I went on to uh, meet Nick, and Nick's allotment. What a plot he's got. It's absolutely fantastic. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Nick for having me and Carol. A lot of you know who this bloke is. This is Nick from Nick's Allotment on YouTube.
Hello, welcome to Flock the Plates. I know, I haven't made a video for ages. As some of you know, I haven't been very well. I've had major surgery. And uh, the good news is I think I'm getting over that. We've been a bit behind all year. Uh, that's just expected really. If you're not very well, you, can't, you just can't do it, can you? We're just gonna have coffee. We've been on holiday for four days and I've come back to a very productive polytunnel. Sweet peas need picking. Cobra climbing French beans. Good job you like beans. And the broad beans. Bunching onions. Radish. Beetroot. Oh yeah, an igloo cauliflower, I've got two, <laughs> just took these children's um, balls on the end of the canes. Oh there it is, oh what are these, do you remember? Yeah, seaweed. No it's not seaweed, what is it? Roots. It's roots. I found one. Oh gosh, put it in here then. Enough, enough for a few meals. One chilli, green, but you can eat them green. Don't have to wait for them to ripe, they're a bit more mild this way. And we got broad beans, Wickham Major, these were, some raspberries, there's some lettuce down there, and the blueberries, and a cup and a lettuce. And we got the uh, cylindrical. Um, beetroot and plates just handed me the name Renova Renova Sealed it up. Look at it, it's uh, really good stuff. No smell to it. If I just show you the compost we took out of the out of the uh, bins, as you can see, it's already pretty good. And I got my uh, comfrey bins over there. This is a, a new country bin I've made. My old ones over there. Uh, you have a look into the top of it. And I'll show you what I've done. I got one of my shopping baskets with a couple of bricks in it. That's just to weight it down and make it easy to get them out like that. And then the country is chopped up, put in the bin with a bit of water. Underneath there is a, like a grid. There's the tap. Take the liquor out the bottom there. Same as I'm doing with the country juice. picture anyway we're gonna weigh them now yeah. so it's eight and a half pounds international kidney second early right we're back again sarpomira with lots and lots of foliage and the and no blight I don't think it's got all right we're just changing bags that one had no uh, handle on it There you go, zeroed. Oh, it's 7.7 .7 now. There you go, Sampo Mira, 7.7 pounds.
Well, today is the 6th of July, 2017. Here we've got a tub of blueberries and a pepper sticking his nose out. Some more sweet peas, more bunch of onions, tray full of shallots. There's plenty of apples on the tree. I think it's a good year for fruit. We've put a bit of a barrier around the sweet corn. Just planted out some more uh, cobra, French beans. So yeah, these are courgettes because I can spot one over there. There you go, one courgette. Where else? And behind that is the horseradish. You may have seen a video of me uh, making horseradish sauce. That's our runner bean uh, frame. As you can see, there's plenty more blueberries. Look at that, there's a nice little bunch over there. See if I can get into that. Back down there. There you go, there's a nice little bunch of blueberries. And plate's just been in here, picking loads. And there's a nice cabbage here. Just take a closer look at the parsnip. That's a nice so I suppose there must be, I don't know if you can see that, there you go, you can see a bit now. I don't know, it's going to be about an inch and a half diameter at the moment. There's a few dahlias. There's the flowers on the runner beans. This is the onions. I think I'm being attacked by uh, mosquitoes or something at the moment. These are tomatoes. They're taking a lot of the lower leaves off now. And then we got the joes along. And they're starting to ripen that down there. If you can see that, it says 43.2 inside, 29.5 outside. And uh, we got a cucumber. They're only little lunchbox ones. We've had one so far. And the cobra beans, <laughs> they're still going. This is another row of beetroot. The other ones came to make the tunnel. And we've got a couple of rows in here. These are my sarpo mirrors. These are the Joe's Long. It's all in the name. Long. <laughs> Moving on down, another coat, couple of rows of lettuce. Again, it's the Lolo Rosso and the Coles. I've taken up my uh, Zebrun shallots. There we go. The tomatoes are doing really well. This one here is uh, Saint Pierre. These are Ocado. We've had a few of them. Plate says they're lovely. Remember that's the one that I didn't take the side shoot off and then it split up into two stems. And here's a truss on the other side. This is the grape. There's another bunch next door. Now this year we've been uh, impressed with our blueberries. We've been picking them by the punnets and so we decided we'd have a go at uh, propagating some. Oh, we're no experts at this by, by a long shot but uh, we don't even know which time of year to do it in. 
us. We thought we'd have a go. Well, now, well, it was a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, in August. But so, what I've done, I've made this um, ramshackle box. I put it on a few legs, rickety legs. <laughs> Might even fall apart. Anyway, we marked the box off with some lines. You can see them along there. They're two inches apart. And the idea was to space them about two inches apart on a on a grid. One is uh, Julia, I believe. We don't know the actual make. It's Julia over there. And this one is Scepter. So and the soil I got in there is moss peat, peat moss. 50% vermiculite and I don't know if you can see there I lined the box with some of that um, shading shade netting see oh this is the top plate's gonna put the top back on that's it and they're also under our shed that's to keep the sunlight off 